Anybody here got any bad habits? <laughs> like, anybody smoke? Anybody drink? <laughs> anybody have sex when they shouldn't be having sex? <laughs> right? Well, for, for me, I, I got all those, right? But, but, <laughs> but also ice cream. I got an ice cream problem, right? And the question is, if I'm eating ice cream late at night, because shit's going bad at work, and I've already eaten a bunch of ice cream, and I, and I already feel bad, and I'm no, I know I'm going to feel worse, is that voluntary? Well, there's all kinds of evidence that it's not. There are strong involuntary components, and those involuntary components are driven by stuff like the package the ice cream comes in is that shade of pink, and it begins to attract me. And we, and scientists, through all kinds of converging measures, can arrive at the idea that I learn an appetitive or a pleasant feeling about that pink thing because I approach it, and I preferentially interact with it, and I'll press levers to get it to be presented to me. In all kinds of different ways, we can say, hey, all these things are consistent with the idea, idea that this fucking animal now likes pink. That's what I mean by the learning of emotions and moods, right? Preferences, likings, dislikings. Because, because fundamentally, I approach something because it gives me a good feeling. It's reinforcing, right? Same thing. If, if somebody puts this baby out here, and I go like this, and I get a really heavy electric shock, <laughs> and that's only going to have to happen to me once, right? And the next time I come in the room, I'm not only under the influence of Pavlovian conditioning and go, oh, shit. Right? I'll withdraw. So reverse sign tracking is another Pavlovian behavior. It ain't voluntary. And all kinds of converging evidence says it's not just a reflex to move away from the pink thing. There are accompanying emotional changes that mediate the responses. Right? So the whole idea, the reason there's um, motivation and, and emotion are a relatively um, neglected part of behavioral science but one of the idea about these things, uh, ideas about these things is that likings and dislikings, emotions, mediate future action in response to stuff, right? So what makes me engage in a bunch of adaptive responses where the thing that shocked the shit out of me is concerned is that my experience through, through Pavlovian conditioning installs in me an antipathy to that. Now, I don't touch it. In five minutes, I won't touch it. If somebody hands it to me, I'll do this, right? So the thing underlying all of my coordinated responses to this really bad experience I had is my fundamental emotion about them, right? So, and basically, the argument is, is are emotions concomitants to coordinated action? Are they just accidents that come out? Or do they mediate? Are they causal to adaptive behaviors? And one of the ideas about motivation and, and and um, mood is that that's the way animals put together behaviors in a sensible way. I, it's not that it's an accident as I learn to not touch this thing. I learn to not touch this thing because it's mediated by my dislike for that because something so bad happened to me the last time I touched it. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. And what we do in dog training is we do a ton of teaching our dogs how to feel about stuff, right? It's not just the conditioning of skeletal responses, there is a time. These guys will show you five days of teaching the dog how to feel about this. I want you to feel appetitive and positive. I want this to be a pleasant experience. Or no. Yeah, or no. I <laughs> this is a <laughs> fucked up experience. I don't want you to ever do this again, right? So emotion is intimately involved. And that's driven by Pavlovian. There's a little bit of evidence that, that involuntary responses are responsive to instrumental contingencies, but for the most part, how animals and people feel about the shit that happens to them is mediated by Pavlovian conditions.